Hello, I'm Christine Niles of Forward Boldly, and in collaboration with Regina Magazine, we present a short conversation with Dr. John Rao. Dr. Rao is Associate Professor of History at St. John's University. He holds a doctorate in philosophy from Oxford University, and he's currently director of the Roman Forum. And he's here today to talk a little bit about the Roman Forum, in particular, the upcoming summer symposium held on the Gardone Riviera in Italy. It looks absolutely charming. I would love to go one day. But Dr. Rao, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Now, you're director of the Roman Forum in it was founded in 1968 by Dietrich von Hildebrand. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners about the reason for its genesis and what is its mission and purpose today? Well, it was founded by Dietrich von Hildebrand along with uh, his pupil, Dr. William Mara, uh, who was my introduction to the Roman Forum, for the purpose to begin with of defending uh, Humanae Vitae, because, of course, Humanae Vitae was born in the midst of a crisis, uh, not just of church authority, but of uh, doctrine and of moral practice, and uh, von Hildebrand thought that desperately needed a defense. So what happened was the Roman Forum uh, was, was formed to do this, and then as time went on and the crisis in the church got uh, even, more, even more elaborate and complex, uh, what happened is that the Roman Forum took on the task of defending church doctrine in every other regard. Then when the liturgical crisis became um, ever more intense, it took on a defense also of the liturgy. Um, what happened since I took over, which was in 1991, was that our work has expanded to include a much more systematic treatment of church history and theology, and then also of, uh, of uh, Catholic philosophy as well, uh, which we do in New York and then in Italy during the summer. Now, this year's symposium is titled, Have We Learned Anything from This Hundred Years War? And I was kind of reading through the description, and uh, you asked the question in the middle of it here, it says, the church had a clear idea of what was wrong in 1914. Does she still have such a lucid judgment in 2014, or has she herself been influenced by the evils against which she once so brilliantly fought? So could you tell us a little bit about the topic here and maybe some of the other topics that the speakers are going to be delving into this summer? Uh, sure, yeah. No, the idea was to illustrate the fact that the problems that we're facing, and I don't really mean just the church alone, I mean society as a whole, are, are the same as they were a hundred years ago. In fact, one could increase this and say that what we're dealing with now are simply consequences of a crisis that began in the West in the 1300s, but obviously we have to, we have to chop this down a little bit to size. But um, many of the issues, most of the issues that the Church had to deal with in 1914 underneath uh, Pope St. Pius X uh, such as, for example, the problem of, um, of uh, theological modernism, problems of nationalism, uh, problems involving uh, the liturgy also, and then uh, social doctrine, the Church's social teaching, and its implications for a just society. All of them are, are, are similar. Um, there's also difficulties involving uh, education, which uh, one, can, one can show the similarities of today with uh, 100 years ago. And then also a topic which is going to be very, very much of concern to us at this program this year, which is, which is that of clericalism as well, the, the whole relationship between the clergy and the laity, um, the problem of uh, the clergy often being focused on certain issues that are of concern for it as a, um, as a, a body within the Church that um, can sometimes differ from concerns of day-to-day -day importance for the laity, such as, for example, families with regard to educating, raising children uh, in, um, in um, uh, a society which is falling apart in, in, in every respect. Um, speakers that we've got coming this year are going to uh, attack all of these questions, um, one of the speakers who is new to our program is uh, Father Hunwick, who's with the Anglican Ordinariate 
in on, in England, which is um, which is is itself a new phenomenon um, and involves these various uh, various uh, members of the clergy who have uh, in fact come over from the Anglican Church, but have uh, retained certain characteristics of uh, their Anglican heritage um, within. The Roman Catholic Church, and I, I've uh, sort of loaded on Father Hunwick discussions of issues involving scriptural studies, and then also, in effect, ecumenism as well, which um, which I thought would be interesting to approach from the standpoint of somebody who is coming from his unique perspective. There's uh, Jamie Bogle, who is the president now of oh, yes. Voce uh, International. There's um, uh, Dr. Thomas Stark who is a German who teaches in Austria, who is an, an absolutely, absolutely superb philosopher, um, speaker, very, very animated himself, and uh, uh, is um, our, our, well, German representative in the, this year's program. We have a professor from the University of Madrid, Miguel Ayuso, who uh, is, has got extensive contacts with the whole Hispanic world, uh, Professor Danilo Castellano, from the University of Udine, uh, a French uh, editor of a journal called Catholica, whose name is Bernard Dumont. Um, it's a quite international gathering uh, that we've got there. Sounds absolutely fascinating. Now, tell us a little bit about the daily program. I understand you offer the uh, traditional Latin Mass each day and two lectures as well. Yes, the program, uh, depending upon the number of priests who come, and there's usually anywhere from four to seven who are there, um, we have a, a fairly large number of masses each day, and um, they're all traditional, but sometimes the traditional masses include the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom as well, so that we've got, uh, we've got Eastern Rite uh, masses taking place. Uh, we have the parish church, which is gorgeous at our disposal. It's got a wonderful old organ as well. We've got a, a fine organist coming from Merton College, Oxford, um, to, to play it this year. We have a, a choir that uh, sings Gregorian chant and polyphony and, um, and does vespers as well in the evening before, before dinner. Um, it's a quite extraordinary liturgical event for the town itself because the town uh, rediscovers its own past when we're, when we're there. Right. And we, we, we also try to build on this by bringing, um, bringing local groups uh, of um, traditional singers and dancers uh, from all different kinds of realms, both both military as well as, as civil, to take part in in our functions. So we transform the town into a uh, uh, an, an overall uh, example of traditional culture in that regard. And uh, the whole idea of the program is to offer to Catholics a chance to to live uh, an entire day, but continuing over almost two weeks which um, exposes them not just to the beauty of the Church's liturgy and then, of course, spiritual activities in conjunction with that, but uh, then also a wider Catholic culture um, in the form of these traditional uh, contributions from the, the, the people of the town, plays that we pour, put on ourselves, uh, perform ourselves, um, the lectures, and then, um, and then also quite, quite fine dining experience as well, uh, so that it's, a, it's just an overall bath in an integrated Catholic culture. Just sounds like a very robust, authentically Catholic atmosphere all around. Yes, yes it is, and it's, it's, it's usually enough to keep us going for another year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's plenty of alcohol as well. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There is. Keeping with our, our Catholic <laughs> heritage here. <laughs> so... Tell us a little bit about the venue itself. It's on the Gardone Riviera. Looks utterly mm -hmm. charming, very beautiful. Why this place in particular? It's probably obvious. Well, no, it isn't. It isn't actually quite obvious. I mean, it's it's obvious when one thinks of the beauty, but um, we happened upon uh, Gardone uh, simply due to the fact that uh, many years ago uh, I wandered into the town in order to visit uh, the home of this, this rather eccentric but extremely important Italian poet, Gabriele D'Annunzio. Uh, D'Annunzio was anything but a representative of, of the traditional Catholic culture. In fact, I think he has the distinction of having had every one of his books placed on the index. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, because of the fact that he was extremely important historically, and also, by the way, 
for the history of the First World War, but that's incidental to my discovery of, of the town. But I, I wandered in there to go see the place, was captivated by its beauty when I was there, but then stunned also on my second visit um, with, um, with uh, my, my future wife and a number of other friends, I was stunned by the fact that it was extremely inexpensive. Um, and so what happened is that friends took to going there quite regularly to enjoy the beauty and then the, the inexpensive accommodations, and again, very quite inexpensive restaurants also. So then what happened is that when we thought of having a program uh, of this sort and wanted to do it in a place like Italy uh, so that we could uh, build on this idea of exposing people uh, to an, uh, an integrated Catholic uh, existence in a kind of Shangri-La that we would create, um, we came to Gardone, the group of us who were planning the whole thing, uh, in order to think over where we might actually do the program. And uh, it, it's, it's strange that we didn't think of Gardone itself to begin with, but we sat there uh, mulling over whether to try to do this in Rome or in Venice or in Florence or some other place until someone who none of us can uh, put his finger on uh, anymore simply said, well, why don't we just do it here? <laughs> and that's what happened. And we've done it here now. This will be our... Um, our, I can't even remember, 22nd or 23rd year that we've been, we've been carrying it on. And what are the dates this year? Uh, June 30th till July 11th, and we do have some places still available for people if they're interested in coming. Okay. And um, as far as the cost, do you provide scholarships for clergy or religious? or? Well, we try to. I mean, whatever money we can get in and donations for scholarship all goes to, to scholarship. Unfortunately, times have been rather hard, and donations have not been as, um, as, as forthcoming as in the past. But um, nevertheless, we, we still very, very much try to offer full scholarships when we have the opportunity. And for those people who, um, who do want to come, who are students or seminarians or priests, we certainly um, uh, reduce the cost to the bare minimum that we have to pay when we can't offer a scholarship. For students, we often, uh, if they're willing, um, shove as many of them into a room <laughs> as they're, 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 they're willing to tolerate, and that, that lowers the cost considerably as well. So I have a number of people this year coming um, who are paying probably each of them um, less than half of what the, uh, the stated cost is um, by sharing rooms and by, um, by um, you know, putting up with one another really more than right. anything else. But it's very easy to put up with one another in an environment like that. Sure. So if uh, people are interested in finding out more, where can they go online? Uh, well, they should, they should actually, the best thing is to email me, I think, at this point. They can look at the whole program at um, www.romanforum.org and then just call up this year's Gardone program. But the best thing, I think, to do would be to email me at this point. That's drjcrao at aol.com. As I say, we, we have space. We've got the, the right time that we go because their season there doesn't really begin until mid-July and afterwards. So between the two hotels that we utilize for the program, uh, one of them always has um, some space left over, so we've got, we've got room yet. Wonderful. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dr. Rao, for taking the time to tell us about the Summer Symposium. And the topics sound fascinating. Great list of speakers, a robust, authentically Catholic atmosphere on the Gardone Riviera, good food, alcohol. Sounds like heaven to me. <laughs> it, 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 it actually is. And so I hope that someday you'll be able to join. I hope so. That's okay, uh, I, hope, uh, I hope my listeners will check it out. It's at Roman Forum. Dot org, or as, as he said, you can uh, best to email him. D-R-J-C-R-A-O okay. at AOL.com. All right. Well, thanks so much for being here, Dr. I appreciate speaking with you. Thank you. You too. Signing off, I'm Christine Niles. Remember that you can find more information about our network and archived shows at forwardboldly.com. And please also be sure to check out our podcast at the Regina Magazine blog found at blog.reginamag.com. Thank you for listening, and in the words of St. Joan of Arc, in God's name, forward boldly. Mm-hmm.